Do you look better than you did on cycle? You're wondering why? Everybody's giving you compliments. Everybody thinks you threw in the Trimbaloni sandwich or the Winstrol you're taking diuretics. Vigor Steve here. It's been a whole month and one full day since my last steroid administration. My arms haven't really caught on yet. They still look somewhat impressive if I say so myself. But I figured now would be a good time to kind of explain what it feels like to come off cycle. Because, well, let's be honest, everybody does blasting and cruising nowadays. You cruise for a couple weeks, the smart ones cruise for a couple months to get their health parameters back into favorable ranges. And then you blast for a couple months out of the rest of the year, right? Maybe two blasts and cruise per year or what I favor, a small cycle, then a somewhat you would consider a blast for only a couple months. And then you do ACG monotherapy. So for the guys to do a post-cycle therapy or ACG monotherapy for a couple of months out of the year to sustain their fertility and testicular function somewhat in the time that they're off cycle, this video is for you so you know what to expect as these exogenous hormones are clearing from your body. But before we get into it, a preemptive front double bicep for the Vigorous crew. You guys know what to do. A like and a comment is highly appreciated. If you're new to this YouTube channel, please consider subscribing, hit the notification bell button so you can get notified when a new video drops. What it feels like the first week, let's get started there. Actually, there's not much of a clear difference regardless of the esters that you were using previously, whether that's an acetate or a propionate, an enanthate, cypionate, whatever ester you were using. Within the first week of stopping your injections, the only thing you will notice is that you start to look progressively better. Some subcutaneous water retention is leaving from your body. Maybe that's caused by the inflammation of the carrier oil that you were using previously. And even if you use pharmaceutical grade products exclusively, you still hold a little bit of water. It doesn't matter if that's from a supposedly dry compound. So let's say you have a testosterone base of only TRT levels, 150 milligrams per week, and the rest is trenmasterone and primabolin. You still hold a little bit of water, whether that's coming from the carrier oil or the injections, or the electrolyte and mineral retention that all of these steroids potentiate, as soon as they clear and start to metabolize from your body, you start to look progressively better. That lasts about a week or two. So in most cases, when you stop the injections, and this is one of the reasons why we stop injections at least a week before stepping on stage, when you're doing a contest prep or even for a photo shoot, for example, you stop the injections a week or two prior, because you start to look progressively better. Now, in those cases, you would bridge this period with an oral steroid in the form of Superdrol, Anadrol, Halotestin, Winstrol, whatever, right? That's up to your preference and how you want to look on show day or photo shoot day. But in this context, when you come off cycle, the first week is usually good. It's sweet, you start to look better. And as long as you control your diet tightly, which you should be doing pretty much year round anyway, between day seven and 14, of your last injection, you'll be posing nonstop. You're taking pictures, you look better than you did on cycle. You're wondering why. Everybody's giving you compliments. Everybody thinks you threw in the Trimbaloni sandwich or the Winstrol you're taking diuretics. But in reality, it's just the steroids leaving your body. There's some of the mineral retention is slowly diminishing as these hormones are clearing and metabolizing. And maybe some of the inflammation of the injection is also going away, which generally speaking takes about five to seven days for inflammatory markers to come down. So there is a sweet spot, a bliss point, a point where you can take a lot of pictures where right, the muscle is not really catching on that these hormones are leaving your body. But from that point onwards, things slowly start to get worse. The first thing I always notice is assuming that I'm keeping up with my training intensity is that the strength is starting to go down. Now at week two, this doesn't really happen. And to be fair, at week four, it's still not really happening. The strength is still there, but I'm starting to lose reps. So whereas I could do a particular machine with the full stack for let's say eight to 10 reps, now I would be able to get six reps, maybe eight if I was pushing it. And these reps that you train closer and closer to failure are becoming less impressive, less enjoyable. You notice that it's getting more tough to really get close to failure and you reach failure faster. Now this is only going to get worse as time goes on, so now at week four, I'm still able to push to failure if I wanted to, but nowadays I'm leaving reps in reserve because I'm trying to preserve my cognition for this YouTube channel. So I'm leaving about two to four reps in reserve, pushing the exact same weight 
that I was pushing four weeks ago. So the funny thing is that I actually got stronger on some of the exercises with about one weight increment, but that's mostly because I changed my training volume, going from five days per week to three days per week. I'm keeping two to four reps in reserve on all of the exercises that I perform, primarily focusing on strength. So this is where some of the strength increase is coming from, even though the hormones are clearly leaving my body. I changed some things to my diet. So mostly doing intermittent fasting, eating most of my calories around the workouts. And I also removed the appetite suppressants, which I was taking previously because I actively tried to get lean while I was still on cycle. So there's a lot of variables in this picture. Again, I would advise everybody that is going to do a post-cycle therapy or ACG monotherapy for a couple months out of the year to adjust their training accordingly. What I personally do is legs twice a week to sustain the mass on my quads, and then a push day consisting of chest and tricep with a reduced volume, primarily focusing on strength, simply to keep the mass there. I don't need to improve my shoulders. As you can clearly see that my shoulders are already sloping and getting droopy. There's no 3D delts anymore, right? It's been four weeks since the last injection. So that's something you notice cosmetically, which we'll address a little bit later. If you can sustain the strength for the first couple of weeks, that's already good. But going forward after that, after you go back to endogenous testosterone production, especially if you have a huge dip during your post-cycle therapy, your strength is just going to get less and less and less and less, which is highly frustrating. It's very annoying, especially if you've been blasting and cruising for years or maybe even a decade. I mean, I was doing blasting and cruising for nine years straight until I came off cycle last year. And then it's a very hard pill to swallow that you're just getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And of course, your physique is deteriorating alongside of that. So that's something you're going to have to deal with. And it's mostly from a mental perspective. It's just tough. Ideally, you still go to the gym, but I completely understand if you want to take a full break, especially during post-cycle therapy, because, well, training is just highly unenjoyable at that point. And it's what I've always told myself and most of my clients that undergo post-cycle therapy it's better to build up than trying to maintain on the way down. Now, this time for me, it's a little bit different. Again, I'm keeping ACG in the picture to sustain testicular function and get somewhat endogenous testosterone production. So I should be able to sustain my strength for the next couple of weeks. Will I go down in a couple increments? I'm sure right? that's just something you can expect. You can't be on God mode on cycle 24 seven. Right? At one point, it might be better just to come off cycle and take a little bit of a break. And whether that's from the strength and the strain on your joints, this is a very good time to do a therapy, right? From a deep tissue massage therapy perspective, right? Get everything fixed, deload. When you're on cycle for a long period of time, you set a new baseline for yourself. And after a couple months or year, even if you come down to a cruise dose, you pretty much forgot what it feels like to be mortal. So when you're coming off cycle and your strength starts to diminish and your physique starts to deteriorate, that's what you're supposed to feel like. That's what general population feels like. And if you come back to somewhat within the reference range testosterone level, that's just you without the steroids. It's not a bad thing, but you're not going to feel 200% like you felt before. You're going to go back to 100% or maybe 50% for a certain period of time, but that's all you. That's not you with a ton of performance enhancing drugs in the picture or you and a little bit of TRT or TRT plus, however you wanna call it, right? It's okay to take a step back and just feel normal for a while. You can't have God mode 24 seven because well, we're burning our candle at both ends or maybe from all angles, and that's just going to shorten our lifespan. So the strength is going to go down. What I'm noticing right now, even though my strength is sustained, but the reps are getting a little bit less, is that when I pick up a 45 pound plate, a 20 kilo plate, is that it feels a lot heavier than before. Whereas before I would rack and unrack plates like no tomorrow and walk them all over the gym from one machine to the next. I mean, my leg day is crazy. Full stack all the plates on one leg press and then move them over to the other side of the gym for the hack squats. Man, that's a workout all by itself. And now I'm struggling to do that. So even though I can do the exercises at very comparable weight and comparable reps, just dragging the plates from one side of the gym to the next part of the gym, that's turning into a struggle, right? It's basically a farmer's walk, one plate in each hand, 
and then walking a couple meters, but you're doing this like eight times when you're using eight plates per side per exercise, that's turning into a struggle. So the strength is still there, but the stamina is getting less. And I'm noticing this during my fasted cardio as well. Before, fasted cardio was a breeze. And it's without the use of compounds that would improve your endurance, like a cardarine, for example, or everything else that increases your endurance and cardiovascular output. In this context, I wasn't using those before. I'm not using them now. I removed the anabolic energetic steroids and my cardio performance is getting less, right? So keep that in mind. Not only will your strength come down, your endurance will come down also, and your performance on a cardio machine, like I was doing the elliptical, it's just getting worse. It's getting more cumbersome. It's getting more tiring. It's getting that 30 minutes in on the elliptical and sustaining my heart rate around 135 beats per minute is getting more tough. But I already know that a couple of weeks from now, my cardiovascular endurance will shoot up. And that's because my body weight is coming down. So whereas now I'm struggling to sustain this body weight with the limited amount of hormones that I'm producing naturally, as these exogenous hormones are declining, when my body weight finally catches up to that, let's say 92, 95 kilograms, depending on the body composition that will have, let's say, four to eight weeks from now, once my body weight comes down, my cardiovascular endurance and my power output on the elliptical or other cardio machines will actually improve. So there will be a slight dip in endurance, but that will shoot up as your body weight is coming down and you get a little bit of adaptation to this endurance, which will take place over time. So pay it no mind. Right? It's perfectly normal. Your endurance will come down and then come back up. And then hopefully by the time you start your cycle again, you have very good endurance, which allows you to get back into this, um, well, fight or flight state that is required for bodybuilding. And you can really beast mode your way through all of the exercises in an hour or less because the strength isn't really there yet. You're not hitting personal bests. And the body weight isn't really back up to your previous all-time highest body weight, at which point the endurance will start to go away. So while you're off cycle doing PCT or ACG monotherapy, as the exogenous hormones are away from your body, your performance will come down, increase back up, enjoy it while it lasts. The endurance is always a roller coaster when it comes to bodybuilding, and it's heavily body weight dependent. Now, as for the cosmetic appearance, obviously, you're just going to get bald from one day to the next. Okay, that just only happened to me, but <laughs> there is something to say. When guys come off cycle, some guys experience shedding. Now, whether that is testosterone blocking dihydrotestosterone derivatives, I'm not exactly sure, but I've noticed this myself several different times. And some of my clients have pointed this out as well. You come off cycle and you suddenly start shedding. And I'm not exactly sure what is causing this. Whether that's testosterone or other anabolic androgenic steroids blocking dihydrotestosterone or dihydrotestosterone derivatives from causing hair follicle miniaturization or inducing shedding of hair. I'm not exactly sure. But I've noticed myself and several other people as well that when you come off cycle within the first month or so, you start to shed more than you were doing previously to the point you can actually go through your hair and there, your whole sink is full with hair. Now, not to the point you're going to get bald overnight. I mean, again, I use the clipper to get the job done, but it is something of notes, something some people might be able to experience when they come off cycle. It's not going to last. Again, it might happen within the first month or so. And then as all of the hormones are clearing from your body, there's no additional hair loss, which is going to take place. From my experience, that's not permanent, but I seem to be very uh, hair loss resistant as uh, due to my genetic makeup. Pay it no mind, it will only last four to five weeks, after which the shedding will be normal again. The plus side of coming off cycle is that your face starts to look streamlined again. Now, my face is not exactly as streamlined as it was last year when I came off cycle, but again, I was in more caloric restrictive states and I came off cycle for a much longer period of time than the, for the short four weeks in one day that I'm off cycle right now. And I'm, again, I have ACG monotherapy in the picture, so I'm not completely androgen deficient, potentiating a little bit of water retention through this pathway. Again, estradiol is being produced directly in the testicles. On the flip side of that, the physique also gets more streamlined. Again, like I mentioned before, the shoulders get less impressive. They start to slope a little bit more. Your traps start to get lower, at least 
This way, they're not touching your ears anymore. Your chest deflates. The thickness is really going away and your glutes are getting smaller, which for me is honestly the worst thing. Not that I care about huge glutes, but my glutes at least keep my pants up. And when you're wearing a 34 inch waist and your glutes and quads are getting smaller, you need to wear a belt or you need to go down another clothing size. So before I would wear XL or XL clothes and now it looks like a poncho. Or again, my pants would fall off because there's no glutes there to hold them up. So you need to go down a clothing size and you have to go through your closet looking for old clothes that you haven't worn in a year or two, right? It's a hard pill to swallow. But again, the thickness is going away. The muscle volume is diminishing as these hormones are leaving your body. So you're going to have to accept that you're going down a clothing size and the longer you stay off cycle and the less you're training for strength. And if you're not keeping your calories up, you're probably going to go down another size, right? So maybe you go from an XL down to a large and then inevitably a medium. And then the last thing I want to touch on is the mental aspect of coming off cycle, which is what most of the people seem to struggle with the most. It's not easy to come off cycle, especially if you've been blasting and cruising for years and you're always on 200% of your emotions and always 200% or 300% of your strength. When you come back down from God mode to mortal mode, it's tough. And whether you're doing ACG monotherapy or PCT, or you come down to testosterone replacement therapy using 100 milligrams to 150 milligrams of testosterone anthate recipient per week, as soon as you come back down to the reference range from super physiological back into the reference range, yeah, it's tough. And besides all the things that I discussed previously, watching your physique deteriorate, watching your strength come down, watching your body composition get worse and feeling your moods come down, right? Your, your drive, your positive aggression, your heightened sex drive and the heightened enjoyment and euphoria that you experience while training to failure and beyond. I mean, that's one of my pet peeves. I live for that shit. <laughs> Honestly, once it all comes down, quality of life comes down with it. And you have to be mentally strong and be prepared to undergo that roller coaster because it's not going to be fun. Ultimately, you'll build some strong character persevering through this down period. Just keep in mind that it does get better over time. Again, the hormones are leaving your body within four to six weeks. You come down from the super high to a normal or slightly below level regarding your emotional state. And as you get used to this normal baseline of emotional state that you've forgotten because you've been blasting cruising for the last couple of years, or maybe only a year, again, it's long enough to kind of reprogram your brain to this heightened state on performance enhancing drugs. Once you come back down to baseline and you stay at baseline for a couple of months, it starts to get a new normal again, right? You learn to appreciate what it feels like to be on cycle. It just means that everything is heightened on cycle and now you're back down to baseline. This is what you're supposed to feel like. This is what everybody else feels like. Just keep in mind that it does get better with time. I mean, the last time I came off cycle for eight to nine months, I felt completely normal at the eight month mark. I couldn't even remember what it felt like to be on cycle. I've set a new baseline for myself, which is based on the last couple of months of memory that you have. So I felt completely normal at the nine month mark. Again, my testosterone levels came back to 600, 630 nanograms per deciliter. That it's normal within the middle of the reference range, I would say. If that doesn't happen for you and you need TRT medically, okay, you go back down to TRT. It will still be less than the cycle you had previously. It should be enough to sustain your health, get all of your markers back within favorable ranges. I mean, there's nothing like getting back on cycle and everything starts to improve. You completely forget about this down period. You restore all of your muscle mass within the first four weeks to eight weeks. And then it's smooth sailing ahead with health intact and a decent amount of endurance that you built while you were off cycle and your body weight came down. I'll leave it at that. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can find everything that I'm associated with down below in the YouTube description section. Follow me on Instagram and TikTok at Vigor Steve. A front double bicep again for the Vigorous crew. You guys know what to do. Much love, much appreciation. See you guys in the next video.